Hey guys, so in this example we have a inclined beam uh, that's held against the floor. So you have a force F here, and it also has the hinge here supporting it. So let's check it out. We have a 100 kilogram um, beam, so mass equals 100. It has length of 4 meters, and it's held at equilibrium. This means all the forces are zero, add up to zero, and all the torques add up to zero. Uh, by a hinge down here, and by a force that you apply F right here. Um, the beam is held at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So this angle here is 30. I'm going to put the 30 in here um, so that I can draw the mg in here. And your force is directed at 50 degrees above the horizontal. So the distance between your force all the way to the horizontal right here is 50. Now, if this is a 30, this is a 30 as well. So we're going to split up that 50 into, you got a 30 here. And if the bottom is 30 and the whole thing is 50, it means that the top over here is 20. So 20 plus 30 equals 50. Okay? Uh, we want to find F. We also want to find, so that's part A, we want to find the magnitude and direction of the net force. So this F can get split into Fx and Fy. Okay? And if the Fx is this way, Remember, the force have to cancel. There's only one force uh, in the x-axis, which is to the, to the right. So the hinge must pull this thing back to the left to hold it in place. So I'm going to say that the hinge has an hx. We're going to assume that the, or the vertical uh, hinge force will be up. So we're going to assume that I have an hy that is up. And if this assumption is correct, our total h net will look like this. Okay? So I have the net h force, h net, and then I have the angle, which is theta um, of h. So we're looking for f, and we're looking for h net and theta h. Cool? So let me just highlight the stuff we're looking for. And the way we're going to solve this is by writing uh, that the sum of all forces equals 0 the, on the x-axis, the sum of all forces equals 0 on the y-axis, and if necessary, which it will be, we're going to write um, torque equations, or at least one torque equation, okay? One key difference in how I'm going to solve this versus some of the previous questions we solved um, is that instead of, um, instead of working with Fx and Fy in their component forms, I'm actually going to just work with F. Um, and the reason is, in this particular case, it's going to be simpler. So if you had a question um, where you had like a bar like this held by a rope, um, you had a tension that's split into tension y and tension x. Tension x produced no torque. Torque of tension x equals zero. So tension x was kind of useless. It didn't really do much. So it was easier to think of t, since x was useless, it was easier to think of t as just ty, and then keep these two separate, the x and y, instead of working with just the total vector t. Um, so these questions were a little bit simpler, so it was better to do that. Um, here, we got a bunch of angles, we got the 30, we got the 50, whatever. So it's going to be simpler to just work with um, the complete form of the vector, the vector form, and not the components, the individual components. We're going to work with the entire vector. Uh, it doesn't matter, you could have done it the other way, and you would've, it would have worked just as well. Um, but you just have one more force because you have Fx and Fy, that's two forces, as opposed to just having F, which is one. So I'm going to do that. Um, it it would have worked the other way, but that's how we're going to roll for this one. All right? So, um, the forces in the x-axis are hx and, and fx, so I can write that fx and hx are equal to each other because they cancel each other. The forces in the y-axis are fy, hy, and then mg, so I can write that fy plus hy equals mg. Now, notice that I don't know fx, I don't know hx, I don't know fy, I don't know hy. Um, I know mg. So we don't know. There's a ton of stuff we don't know here. Um, so this is not going to be enough. I'm going to have to write a third equation, which is going to be a torque equation. Sum of all torques equals zero about some reference axis. Now remember, the way you want to do this is the reason why we're writing this equation is because we're looking for f. So you want to write your torque equation away from this point, right? So let's say we got points one, two, three. Point three is the worst point to write the torque equation about. Because if you were to do this, if you were to write the sum of all torques on point three, 
um, these guys, you're basically treating this as the axis, and these forces will not produce a torque. In this case, we're dealing with F only. F would not produce a torque about 0.3, which means it's not going to show up in the equation. And the whole point of writing an extra equation is so you can solve for F, so you want an equation where F is on the equation. So to do that, you're going to write the torque equation about 0.1 or 2. Those are much better choices. Now, the first rule is to write the torque equation um, on an axis away from your target variable. The second rule is to pick out of the uh, available options, if you have multiple, which we do, um, to pick a point with the most forces acting on it so that the most a number of torques will be canceled, so you have the fewest number of terms. Basically, wherever shit's more complicated. So it's more complicated here, and we're going to write the torque about 0.1. Okay, so let me do that. Torque about 0.1. And this looks like this. Here's um, 0.1. Put a little bar here and I have mg going down and I have f going up like this okay this is 30 right here all right um, this here is 30 and this here is 20. okay so let's figure out which way these torques um, which torques what kind of torques are produced here so if you have the bar like this and mg pushes it down this is going to be a clockwise torque, so it's negative. So the torque due to mg will be negative. And the f, it's a little bit harder to see, it's going to give you a positive torque. Um, one way you can know that is that if, if mg is negative, the other one has to cancel, so it has to be positive. Um, another way you can see this is you can extend the r vector, right? So instead of thinking of it as like this, you can think of it as you have a long, um, uh, a long beam like this, and it's being pushed like this. So basically slide, extend your beam, and slide the force this way instead, and delete this. Now it's easier, you've got a force pushing this way, it's going to cause this thing to go um, counterclockwise. Okay? And really the reason that happens is because, um, because the force is counterclockwise, right, away from the extension of your R vector. So if you keep extending your R vector, Here's the R vector, the force happens this way, so the force causes this kind of rotation. So the torque of F will be positive. So I have one negative, one positive, which means they cancel each other out. Torque of mg, I can write torque of mg equals torque of F, and then I can expand this equation. So torque of mg is going to be mg r sine of theta, and torque of F is going to be F r sine of theta. Let's draw our um, R vectors. So the R vector for mg looks like this, R equals 2. And the R vector for, let me write this somewhere else, R equals 2 right there. And the R vector for this guy is R equals 4. Okay, so the distance, uh, the, the length of the R vector for mg is 2 because it's halfway, and F happens all the way at the end of the beam, so it's 4. What about the angles? The angle for mg, if this is a 30, we're supposed to use this angle right here between the R and the MG. So it's the angle up here. Um, so instead of 30, it's going to be 60. Okay. It's the complementary angle. Um, and then here, the angle between R and F is a little bit more complicated, but you, we can extend the R vector. Here's F. If you extend your R vector right here, it's easy to see that the angle you're supposed to use is not the 30, not the 50, it's the 20. Okay? So the angle we're supposed to use here is 20. All right. So if you plug this in, um, this entire thing here, mg, is going to be 110, 2, sine of 60. Um, this is 4f sine of 20. And the whole thing on the left side is going to be 1732 um, equals 4.342. That's the sine of 20 F. And if you solve for F, you get that F equals F equals 1266. So I got the whole F. That's good news. Now check it out. Now that I know F, because I know the angle for F, the angle for F is 50, right? I can find fx and fy. So from f, I can find, this is the path, I can find fx and fy. 
Now notice here that if I have fx, I know hx, so it's actually the same number. And if I know fy, um, if I know fy, I can find hy using that equation. So I can get, it's not the same number, but I can get to hy. And once I know both of these guys, I can get to h and the angle. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So how do I find fx? fx is just f cosine of theta. So it's 1, 2, 6, 6 cosine of 50 because the angle, right, you have to be very careful here, the angle for f is 50. And if you do this, I have fx is, I have it here, um, 814. 814 newtons. Fy is 1, 2, 6, 6 sine of 50, which is 970. Okay, that's 970 newtons. This is the same as hx, so I can say hx is 814. So I got that. So I know f, I know fx, fy, I know hx, and I have to get hy using this equation up here. Okay. So let's keep going. So HY plus TY equals MG, which means HY equals MG minus TY. MG is 100 times 10 minus TY, which is 970. Um, this means that HY equals 30. Okay? HY equals 30. Now, technically, HX is... Uh, negative because it's going to the left, right? Because it has to go away opposite from um, your force fx this way. Um, this thing is going to be up. We assumed that it was up um, and we got a positive, which means that that assumption was correct. Um, and it also has to help out um, our hy. If our hy is 970, it's not enough. Um, it's not enough to hold. It needs a little bit of help. All right, cool. So if you want to if you want to draw this real quick, what you end up with, just to get a visual, what you end up with is a tiny hy because this is thirty and a huge. I mean, this isn't even to scale. It's a much bigger difference than this and a huge hx eight fourteen negative because it's to the left. So now if you find h, h total is going to be hx squared, which is um, eight fourteen. Squared, the fact that it's negative doesn't matter because it's going to get squared anyway. 30 squared, squared of the whole thing. This is just Pythagorean theorem because it's a vector addition. Um, and this is going to give 815. It makes sense that you get 815 newtons because the total vector is like this. This is such a tiny angle right here that you imagine that the blue line and the red line are almost the same line, so they're almost the same length. You can also find theta, which we expect it to be a tiny angle. And it's going to be the arc tangent of y over x. Y is 30. X is 8, 14. Okay. And if you do this, the answer is 2.1 degrees. Now, I'm actually going to plug in. I'm, I'm plugging in both of these guys as positive. When you plug two things as a positive on the arc tangent equation, um, your calculator thinks that you're talking about this. Thinks you're talking about a 30 positive and an 814 positive. So it's actually giving you the angle on the first quadrant. The good thing is that if you are instead on the second quadrant, um, the angle is exactly the same. It's just the image, right? It's an image about the y-axis. So if this is 2.1 here, it means that this angle is 2.1 there. So what I would do is I would draw, um, I would draw this here, okay? Let me just have this here so that you have it as part of that explanation. Um, but your final, for your final answer, I would draw um, so you can illustrate where that angle goes. Okay. Uh, that looks terrible, but we're just going to leave it there. Um, 2.1 degrees, so you can show exactly where that angle goes. Uh, this is 30, this is 814, this is 815. Okay. So this is the final h vector if you want to also show where the angle goes and that's it for this one cool so a little tricky different angles had to figure out which ones to use um, hopefully this made sense but let me know if you have any questions and let's keep going